We've got uh, a circuit that takes a square of a four bit number, right? So here I've got uh, four is the input and my output is eight, right? This is the least significant bit and this is the most significant bit. If I change it to uh, five, remember this is your simulation tool here. Uh, if I change it to five, five squared is uh, five squared is twenty-five, and so we've got sixteen plus eight plus one, so we've got twenty-five there. So this circuit uh, is working, and what we want to do now is uh, want to hook this up to something a little bit more comp complex. Uh, what I'm thinking would be kind of cool is if we just had a button, and every time we click the button it would give the next square. So it would give one, and then it would give four, and then it would give nine, right? It's just, if it just started counting right down, uh, right down this list here, every time you hit the button, it gives the next, next value. Now this, uh, this requires something a little bit more advanced uh, in that it requires memory. We have to know, if you just wanna press a button, we have to know what the previous one was. So if the last one was 49, we have to know that the next thing would be 64. Um, so what's actually most useful is to just remember the inputs. And, uh, and since the inputs are linear, linearly increasing, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 15. So let's, uh, let's do a quick little Google here. Um, for a device called a counter, um, a counter is something that uses memory elements that are able, th uh, they're able to just go upwards, right? So we start off at zero and then we go to one, two, three, four, every time we get a clock pulse. The easiest one or the one I always go to is uh, D flip flop counter. We go to D flip flop counter. We don't really have to know much about it, but if we uh, if we just find the schematic, we should try and build it in Logisim and see how it works. Fortunately, my internet out in the boonies is not super great, so we gotta uh, just let that load for a second. There we go. We go over to images. Wait a couple decades for that to load. All right. So this is exactly what I'm thinking of. This is a four bit counter. And so what we'll expect to see is uh, this, this is our least significant bit and it goes all the way to our most significant bit. So least significant bits right here. Um, and then we have a clock. And the idea is every time there's a pulse on this clock, this value will increment or it'll start counting. Um, so without knowing much about how these memory elements work, I'm just gonna start dropping some of these on to uh, onto my design. So I'm gonna to go to my main design here and I'm gonna to go to the memory menu and right here's my D flip flop. Um, so I'm gonna drop a, drop a flip flop there. Uh, give a little space, drop another flip flop. Or flip. All right. Now, I just want to reference this, uh, this design here. So maybe I can make this guy a little bit smaller. Start connecting based off of, based off this diagram here. So let's see what we've got. So this, this is Q, or this is the output of the memory element. It's what it's remembering. And then, Flip-flops, they always have this Q naught, or it's the opposite of Q, it's just the prime of Q. So it looks like what we've got here is we've got a Q prime is going in, uh, this. and it's also feeding in to the clock for the next input here. So this guy, oops, I'm gonna control Z that. Let's do that. And so let's, uh, let's do that for all these guys here. 
I always just like to take a couple more seconds to make sure my routing looks uh looks decent. Uh oops, this guy's this guy screwed up. We want to go into the D input, which is actually it's kind of a little confusing because there's text overwriting other text. Uh there we go. So I'm actually trying to get into this input here. Uh, let me delete that segment. We're going into that D input. Um, obviously, there's not a dot there, so that's saying it's not connected. This clock is going to feed off this. And our flip flop. Again, just like taking a couple seconds just to try and make sure everything's nice and consistent. Uh, this clock feeding from here. This Q not signal is coming out. Going around. All right. Um, and then we have these Q0, Q1, Q0, or Q2, and Q3 signals. Um, and I'm just going to keep those guys uh, floating. Because actually, what we have here is we've got these little uh, green circles. Are they black? I can't really tell right now. Um, yeah, they're green. Uh, that display the value that's currently stored in the flip-flop. Um, so last thing we actually have to do is we need to have some sort of clock signal. In this case, we're going to use a uh, just a button as, as our clock signal. So I'm going to go to input output, and I'm just going to drop a button down. I'm just clicking this, and it'll automatically kind of come out. I'm not going to connect like that. Now, I just kind of want to start simulating this and make sure it kind of works right. So we're, we want to look at these guys. Remember, it's going to be backwards. This is our least significant. And this is our most significant. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's, let's label that just to be entirely sure. Right? LSB. Uh, and let's put one more for MSB. Just to be entirely clear so we don't look at it later and get confused. Now, if I start simulating this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. And now we've got all ones, right? We're at 15, which is the biggest value in our sheet here. If I click the button again, it rolls over back to zero. So that's okay behavior. Um, now, I would like to, uh, I'd like to drop my square circuit into this, right? I want to, I want to run off this here. Um, so I'm actually just going to take this. If I, if I click this here, I can drop it, drag and drop it like a component. And uh, I'm going to put it right here. Actually, I don't really like this symbol. It's not very descript. If I go uh, edit circuit appearance, uh, widen this out just a little bit, select these pins, I'm going to move them. Just right to the side there. And I just want to do a quick little text here. So we're going to say um, this is in zero. Actually, let me. If I, so the nice thing is if I click this pin, if you look over in the corner here, it tells me which one I'm looking at here. That, that doesn't really help me too much. So the top one is actually in three. So if I go back to edit circuit appearance, I'm gonna change, change this text to, at least not let me change it. So I'm just gonna delete it and add, I'm just gonna put three and zero here. And now I'm just gonna remind myself which one is the most significant. So the most significant output is at the top. 
So let's say must be LSB. I'm gonna just a bit. All right, just enough information to tell me kind of what's going on there. It might be more pertinent to try and label every pin and maybe space it out, but this is good enough for right now. Now, uh, if I drop this down, here's my new symbol. Um, all right, so I want my least significant bit to connect to the Q, the least significant bit. I'll go through and do that for each one here. Oh God, it went, went the reverse way. Oh, oh. Not good recovery. Oh God, there we go. Perfect. Well, all right. Now, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put some outputs on this. Uh, so the easiest thing, I could use some LEDs. I usually use these pins here. So I'm just gonna, Drop these down here. Just to verify it's working, I'm gonna do these significant four bits. Da da da. All right. Uh, so let's uh, start clicking some, clicking this button here, see if it starts going up uh, according to this little plan here. So we sh should expect to see zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, and then we should see zero again. Oof, we got some sort of error here. So that's no bueno. Um, we got an error on these last two bits. Interesting, huh? Um, let's see what that might be. We have an error. Uh, let's let's go into the square circuit here. Hmm. Or it might be causing an error. So whenever this value here is a one, it appears to be causing an error. And this bit here is a one, it causes errors. So it's something to do with this bit here. What's interesting is when we look at, when we look at this, this is saying our inputs are one, one. And so that is that is the current input configuration, right? We've got a one and a one, so one and a one there. So when we head into this guy, we've got that, and we've actually got the correct output. Um, I'm not entirely sure why we have an error here. So I'm gonna actually delete these guys. here but a good lesson nonetheless oh I see uh, so somehow there's something that's something weird going on there oh there we are yes yeah, so there's there's a connection between those two which obviously we can't have one problem I've had with this software is getting rid of segments there I got just got rid of it so I think that explains our issue. So you gotta be careful uh, with what we've got connected there. So let's try this again. That guy looks happy. Oh, I'm gonna wire myself into a hole here. Okay. We'll just do the three bits just to verify that we don't have errors there. Uh, 
Uh, so now I go through about clicking these. So I don't have any errors. So if I were to go through and do every bit, which is obviously a good idea, uh, we could verify that we go through this whole pattern and we're just kind of uh, putting some blind faith in these memory elements and seeing that they're actually counting upwards. And so these counters, they're very useful. Um, and, and you can use, you, you could obviously use these as just single bit memory elements, like, hey, temporarily save this single bit or temporarily save this four bit value. What The way these work is whatever you have getting written into the D input or this bottom input, when you clock it, when you press this little clock button, it will save whatever values are on the D input until it's clocked again. And then if there's a new value, it'll save that. So here it is. We, uh, we did a, a quick uh, counter that uh, controls our square circuit.